Hey guys, Kurt from Time Machine Transport. So, excuse my shop again, so I've not cleaned it. So, uh, my guy Rich over at um, Freightliner, I'm going to put a new check valve in because we got the cover and everything off. Uh, the uh, welder cross street is going to fix that flaring tool for me for that injector cup. So that's on pause right now. But, so I figure while we have all this off, now is the perfect time to do the check valve, the fuel check valve, which is right there on the back of your motor block towards the top. And I first I wasn't going to do it. However, when I went, she's loose back there. I wasn't going to change it. I was like, ah, it's kind of difficult back there. But when she's moving like this, that's no bueno, man. That means I got to pull that fitting out of the motor head and tighten her down. Put some more Teflon on it and tighten it down. So this is your check valve. My guy Rich over at Freightliner sold me this line, but it, there's, this line isn't for this truck, so I get to take that back. It was like 20 some bucks. So that's a good thing. At least I don't have to get involved with that. So I'm going to put you guys on pause. I got a towel over the, the block so I don't get any stuff in there. The two size wrenches I'm using. All right, and I went on, I went on eBay and bought this. This was $20, $20 less on eBay. Well, I get a decent price for Freightliner, so <coughs> I don't know what the, maybe the part number is on there. You guys can see that. Let me clean my lens. Hold on. Uh, let's see, where was it? It was upside down. Yeah, there you go. Can you see that better? Let me see if I can get out of the light. I don't have my readers on, but that's the part number from eBay, if you guys can see that. I don't know what's going on with my phone, man. This thing is hard as shit to focus. Like I said, I don't have my readers on me, so I apologize. Anyways, the check valve from eBay. But I, on my cost, I saved $20 by going on eBay and getting this check valve. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I wasn't, I looked at it, I'm like, oh man. I mean, it's not, when all this stuff is back on, the, the cover and everything, that's gonna, that would be a bitch to get to unless you knew exactly where it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a mirror, and I already sized out my, my um, oh, I didn't even tell you what size the wrenches were. So, I would advise you get a mirror, and a mirror is going to be easier to kind of pull it or to kind of see what you're doing back there. So, I'm probably going to end up just getting up in there with my head because I can squeeze my arm down on the side of the block there. So, I'm using a 7 8 open end for the actual check valve itself, and 3 quarters, I believe. It's either three quarters or 11 sixteenths for the hose that goes to the check valve. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna put you guys on pause. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it, and then uh, we'll see we'll see where we go from there. All right, guys, I'm back. I'll show you what I did exactly, step by step. So you got this line here that goes to the end of the of the uh, check valve. Sorry, it's blurry. I can't. What the hell is going on with my focus on my phone? Now I'm just going to take... So this fitting here was a three-quarter. This next one, I'm just going to spin it off of this fitting here to the left of it. That's going to be a 7 eighths. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin this out, and then I'm going to take off this fitting where my finger is right here tapping on it. That's another fitting right there. So I'm going to pull this off with a 7 eighths. Then I'm going to grab another wrench, probably a 7 eighths as well, or a three-quarter. And I'm going to twist this out clean the threads and Teflon it, and then put it back in, put you guys on pause. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, so when I, it was easier just to twist the whole fitting out. So this is where that hose went on to, and then this fitting here, an L, 
went up into the head. So it was just easier just to just twist it out so I didn't have to get a wrench on here. So it will be a lot easier this way. So, however, I'm gonna put you down for one second. Actually, I'm just gonna pause it. So check this out. So there was no there was no thread compound or Teflon or anything on the end of those. And that's the part that went into the head, the threads there on the left. There was nothing on there. It was just sitting in there loose. So that's not good. It was sucking air or whatever. So and maybe that's why I was sucking some air as well. It was definitely injector cups, but um because obviously I had diesel in the or coolant in the diesel. <coughs> but these injector cups, look at those O-rings, man. They're like almost gone. They're just they're like it's just like a film on there. <laughs> so they're not even in there. So, anyways. But uh yeah, whoever put this and maybe the check valve was newer in this thing. It looks newer. It almost looks like mine. So maybe there's nothing wrong with the check valve itself. So, but I saw a couple guys on YouTube that actually put in new aftermarket ones. And they said they had nothing but problems. Hey, how you doing? Hi, neighbor. How you doing? So anyways, I'm just going to put you guys on pause. Sorry, guys. That was our uh, neighbor from uh, tree cutting service next door. So anyways... I like old timers that like to just stop in and say hi. Anyway, so yeah, they didn't use any sort of uh, thread compound or Teflon or anything on this. And I'm, I'll, I'll put money on it once I twist this off. There's not going to be anything on these threads. So that's that was probably part of the problem. So I'm debating whether I should. This, this check valve looks pretty new. So I don't think I'm even going to change out the check valve. But I am going to re-Teflon it and secure it. But anyways, just wanted to show you guys how to do a uh, check valve, a fuel check valve on a Detroit 60 series. and uh, But yeah, this looks pretty new, so I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to go ahead and keep this one for a spare or sell it again or send it back. But anyways, it's always nice to have something in, uh, in the shop in case we ever need it. But I'll go ahead and clean these up and put it back in. I'm going to put you guys on pause. All right, guys, back in. Went ahead and... Teflon it up, and uh, that's pretty much it. So that's uh, how to do a check valve on a Detroit 60 series. <coughs> I think uh, if you had to, I mean, I'm a big guy, so if you had to, if you were smaller, you may, if your tire's off, like mine is because I did my kingpins, you may be able to get up underneath you can see it right there you could probably get it from down here i wouldn't guarantee it but it would if if you can't get in through the top you'd have to get in through the bottom so and everything there is obstructing so you'd have to come in through the driver's side and i don't think the passenger side would work because of the exhaust pipe on that side but if you had to that's why right now eh, nope you won't be able to get it on this side so so the best thing is to do is if it were old i looked at the same number they're almost identical so they must have got it it's got to be a freight liner part because freight liners are similar to that one so anyways if you're gonna do your cups or whatever you might as well check your check valve and get that done and like i said it did not need the line that i had the metal line it's just a compression hose that goes to the one side so other than that that's how you do a check valve in a detroit 60 series please like and subscribe to the channel ciao